Hey, man. Can you hear us? Yeah, I can hear you just fine. Can you hear me? Sweet. Yes, we can. Things are, things are working. Thank you for being our first test case on, uh, on the talks. <laughs> Happy to help. Sweet. Is that your room? That room is sweet. Yeah, all my toys, my Gundam models. Gundam models. Nice. Uh, yeah. So, uh, Mars, before we cut to your talk, uh, you've been doing speaking at GDEX for years and years now uh, at this point. So thank you again for, for being a part of it and helping us out. Um, do you want to give a just quick uh, little aside about yourself? Yeah, so Mars Ashton, I've been teaching at Lawrence Tech University near Detroit, Michigan for eight years now, uh, teaching for over 15, doing independent game development, helping a lot of, uh, a lot of companies start up, and doing a number of freelance gigs kind of on the side. Teaching's always been my main thing. Uh, I primarily make games in Flash still. Wow. Uh, Holding strong. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, it's it's still a wonderful, powerful engine. You know, browser-based uh, stuff is obviously uh, going away, but uh, I love the tools. I love animating. I, I'm talking about some of that in, in this talk here. So Sweet. Well, Cody, I think we're ready. We'll uh, check back with you uh, after your talk. Cool. Thanks, Mars. Hey, I'm Mars Ashton. And this is my talk, Halt and Pop, which are two key words for animation techniques and uh, kind of methods for, for creating much, much stronger game feel with the, the control for your, uh, your playable character. Uh, I'm going to do something kind of cool here that I, I've been giggling about as I've been doing multiple takes for this. You ready? I'm ready. Uh, so I'm the assistant professor of game art at Lawrence Tech. The program there, uh, which is based out of Southfield, Michigan, has recently changed the, the program name to Game Design, which is a much better, uh, much more appropriate term for the, the courses and the, and the curriculum there. I've been teaching a lot of project-oriented courses, kind of a go-to person uh, for the university and, and, and game development there. Um, love it. It's kind of my primary career. I've been there for eight years and, and teaching for over 15 now uh, in a number of different universities and, and now this is my home. Uh, so uh, I also do a number of other things, uh, QA testing, I, I've done technical writing, I've helped to build uh, a lot of different uh, you know, indie teams, startup companies looking to do app development and the like. Uh, so I've kind of been a, a bit of a web within the community. Uh, I've, I've done my own independent game development, uh, which you might have seen at GDEX over the years. Uh, and I'm a, I'm, I'm a dad. I'm a dog dad. Uh, I'm not your dad. Uh, that was a bad joke. So a little bit about what I do. Um, Flux is something that's being shown off at GDEX this year. Uh, in the past, I've shown off Access Descending, uh, which was an award-winning and canceled project that I was working on. And uh, I, I have a number of other projects under my belt. You can always check out my, my itch page and, and the like. I'm sure I'll be linking it in, um, in Discord and, and anywhere else. So um, most of my, my independent projects are solo. Uh, I actually work in Flash to this day. Uh, wow, Mars, but Flash is, is dead or dying or uh, what have you. Uh, I kick out EXEs and a really good buddy of mine, shout out to Matt Willard, uh, good old Willow, uh, actually ports it over to Mac for me. Um, so it's, it's not browser based, it's not really affected by these things. There are always limitations, but I kind of like that. I like the limitations of, of you know, uh, the game engine that is Flash. Um, you know, and it's, uh, it's, a lot of the work is still very, I don't know. It, it's won awards. It's it's been placed in you know finalist categories. It's been nominated for you know crowd favorite stuff, and you know I found a lot of success. And I know it well. You know this, when I went to school, Flash was was the thing. Uh, I still do art in Flash, no matter what as well. I, I love the art tools in Flash, and you know I use some Photoshop for post production and stuff. But 
uh, I'm a I'm a Flash dude. Um, yeah, so this is actually a shot of a game that I built uh, in Unity using uh, Flash art that was ported in. Uh, like I like Flash. Uh, it's not going to change anytime soon. Uh, so yeah, Axis Descending was a you know canceled award-winning game, uh, something I was working on for way too long. Learned a lot from, and a lot of that project and, and what I learned from it, I ended up applying to um, a, a project like Flux. Um, so this actually started off as a, a small 24-hour prototype. Um, I was taking uh, some courses at Michigan State University and their wonderful graduate program, and uh, you know I, I built this kind of fidget game. Where you got this cool blue-haired, uh, you know, motorcyclist, and you hit some buttons. There's no consequence. There's no challenge, and you're based on you know this this flux value. It increases the volume of the music, and it makes you go faster. And as you hit buttons, things fly by the screen, and, and so on. It was just kind of this cool experience, and. Uh, you know, I, I showed it off and eventually developed it into all of these other mini games and rhythm games and threw in uh, a beat em up thing in there. And <laughs> it became a passion project for sure. Uh, currently working on Gunsheath, uh, which is going to be on display at the Akron Game Fest. Uh, wonderful, kind of uh, smaller scale, more private, just very, very chill vibe uh, event uh, in Ohio as well. Uh, and then Frog Dad, or Sire, is going to be my next project here. You like frogs, you like dads, you like frog dads. Um, and, and typically all of these projects, I really start off with the character, the player character, which is where a lot of these techniques have, have really come from, in addition to just things that I've learned, design patterns that are, are, are very common. You might be familiar with some of these uh, or utilize some of these, but this is a, a bit of a, a tome of sorts. Uh, you know, to, to really help you know, moving around a, a character, you're using attacks, you're, you know, interacting with the environment. Like, here's some simple ways of making this just feel better uh, and look better. Uh, and it's what I, what I employ right off the bat. And I, I probably spent more hours just uh, tweaking uh, the timing and the pacing for animations from, you know, little <laughs> frog jumping animations to attack animations more than I spend actually building the rest of the game. Uh, it's a little, a little obscene. Uh, so a few things that I learned uh, to help you tighten this up. Um, look at us. Uh, mind you, this is a little bit of art, a little bit of code. I'm not actually providing code. I'll have some pseudo code listed uh, and, and just some notes on, on animation stuff. Lots of stuff. So the halt. Uh, stop the player when they initiate an action. Pretty straightforward. Uh, you know, they're interacting with things. You don't want them sliding around, of course, but uh, this really helps too, you know, pre-action. Like, I'm going to, uh, you know, charge a bow. I'm going to do a cool, you know, flip attack or something like that, right? Like, give yourself more control of the player's movement and their speeds by taking into account that initial boop, halt, you're going to start from zero, and then you can move forward with whatever speed, acceleration, whatever you know you're you're going for from there. So simple, right? Halt. You're catching on uh, to what what we're talking about here. A cancel. If you play fighting games, this is probably super familiar, right? The cancel, the dodge cancel, the the guard cancel, whatever. You're in the middle of one action. You hit a button that would trigger another action. And you don't have to wait for that original one to, to finish, right? To play out, to time out. Uh, you know, in the middle of an attack, you can block or roll out of the way. Now, this isn't always, you know, going to be needed. Sometimes you want that kind of telegraphed attack. Sometimes you want that slow wind up, build up delay. Totally cool. But looking at these, you know, you can look at whether or not you want to, you know, you're evaluating, right? Do I want to do this? Do I want to do that? Um, in a lot of ways, this creates much more fluid, faster, more like, like you know, Twitch-based, I'm not talking Twitch-Twitch, 
uh, but you know it allows the player to react and respond a lot more quickly and, and kind of flow between all of these different actions and states, right? Feels good being able to, in the middle of, of uh, you know, an enemy's very powerful attack or something, you're noticing that you're, you're making an, an error, you did the wrong thing, and now you can, you know, kind of correct that course of action. A lot of games that I make, the speed and, and responsiveness is, is really a big part of that, that overall feel. Uh, a mix. So this is really just you have an attack, and you know it's it's one swing. Like, give us some variation. You know, have have a different um, the character swinging the sword from a different you know original pose or over this shoulder, over that shoulder, as as pictured. Um, you know, make an action. If it's something like a sword swing, if it's something like a jump, consider how you can introduce a mix where it's like two animations in one. It'll play one randomly, maybe. Um, this might be something that's easier to do depending on you know, how you build the character and, and your overall animation process. So if it's a complicated process, it might not be the easiest, but it's something that goes a long way. Same timing, same window for damaging an enemy or, or using a cancel or, or whatever else you want, but you know, it, it creates um, this this lack of repetition which is always good it's your input buffer uh let's say you do have an ability that you know you can't cancel out of but you know you don't want the player to you know have that input already made and then it doesn't go anywhere you want them to jump in and immediately yep you're doing this cool charge attack and then you want to go into a dash well they hit the dash button mid attack so store that use the input buffer if they did that thing after it ends, immediately shift to that, right? Goes a long way. Players don't want to have to hit this, you know, same button a couple of times to be able to, to do what they want, right? Adds to the responsiveness. You know coyote time. I bet you know coyote time. You're about to jump off of a ledge in a platformer, really tricky jump. And you know that you, you jumped right at the edge, but for whatever reason, your character didn't jump. It didn't register. And your character just falls to the death. <laughs> uh, coyote time. You can see this pretty pretty well here. Boom. Character obviously leaps over the edge, um, and you know there's that brief moment of time where you know the character kind of there's this this sort of handicap or like you know um, brief moment of like um, we'll save you. We got gotcha. you. You can you can jump. It was close enough, right? This is oh huge in platforming games you have any kind of jumping huge uh, it's a big thing in flash too with the way that it does its thing um feathering a uh, really important you know talking about the way that all of these things move and the timing and pacing so far but what about actual interaction you know being able to hit something feather it tighten expand it the player character like their hitbox shouldn't be as big as the actual character art. Like shrink that down a little bit. What that's going to introduce are those moments where there's near misses, where there was a bullet, a, an attack, an explosion, whatever, and you were just close enough to miss it. It makes the player feel really, really good. Um, and of course, you can also expand some hitboxes. You know, if if it doesn't really feel like your 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 attacks are landing or your projectiles are really landing home, you know, expand the hitboxes on the enemies, on the bosses, on the destructible stuff. You want that to be easier to hit, right? Player character more difficult to hit. Enemy characters a little easier to hit. Give it a bump, bump. Give it a bump. Uh, move them forward a little bit. Not always uh, going to be super applicable. Sometimes you might just want a little shift and not a rapid one as, as pictured. Uh, you know, Flux has a, a beat em up mode and you know, you can unlock these daggers that have very rapid strikes. And I, I wanted a little bit of a bump during that animation to, to move them along and allow them to advance and kind of continue to close in on the enemy. Pop, right into the action midway. We are not waiting for the character to draw their arm back and grab their sword. We're already in the middle of it, right? We're swinging that sword. We're doing that thing. Uh, you know, the player then, they hit the key. It happens. It happens fast. They're able to respond to things much more quickly. Uh, feels really good. 
might not be what you want to do, of course. You might want the big old wind-up. Uh, dare I say some of the franchises that use that quite a bit uh, or are referenced all the time, but you know the, the pop is like this midway, right in the middle of that action that you're trying to uh, create. Um, it's a really nifty animation trick um, to make things seem a lot more um, immediate. Um, you hit the button, it happens right away. Uh, following up with uh, the last few here, we've got the telegraph. So we've talked about it pretty heavily. Uh, you know, the, the character creates some kind of pose, they pull back. Consider how the character is able to move or cancel. Consider your halts and your, your bumps. Are they moving? Are they doing anything? All of these things can help that telegraph out. Um, you will probably be using this more for enemies and uh, you know your enemy attacks more than anything else. Um, odds are. But if you kind of follow along with some of these other uh, bits that we've covered so far, uh, you should be able to make a pretty informed design decision uh, based on that. Uh, so other things that are you know a little bit more complicated or a, a combination of things, the delayed push. All right, it's a bit of a post bump, uh, halt into a bump where you stop the character and they're they're held, they're they're doing something, and then you bump them forward a great deal. Uh, what this does is creates a lot of anticipation. One of the many principles of animation. Uh, it feels really good if you're doing something like a charge up dash. You know, let me midair, yeah, let me build up that momentum, that energy, whatever, release, or, or just after a period of time, shoot forward. Even a minor halt into a bump where you stop the character, you know, from moving a little bit. There's some kind of really awesome key pose that you want to emphasize the, the next uh, state of the action or, or pose, and then you bump them right into it, right? And then they're moving. It creates this this kind of stutter, right? This this impactful, like, kind of heavier or more powerful uh, feel. Some danglies. You gotta have the danglies. The secondary action, the stuff that you know you throw in there. That's your your uh, your butt cloth, your rat tails, you know, your your hair, your sway, all of the secondary stuff. You got a sword swing. Okay, cool. You got to get that character swinging in. You got to get that motion blur, you know. But then you want the cloth to adjust. You want all of that stuff to kind of shift and sway according to the player's weight, right? Uh, arcs, another another principle of animation here. You know, follow your shapes. If you're doing some kind of swoosh effect, right? You'll see here. Follow those contours as time passes, and it creates a really really smooth transition. Uh, one of the approaches that I have for this is I create a circle, I warp it, and then I use kind of like an eraser or a stamp out uh, kind of circles uh, or oval shapes out of that over the period of time. It creates really smooth, really smooth motion. You're not seeing that in full time, but you've seen that kind of present throughout some of my other examples here. And then, you know, last but not least, uh, invulnerability frames. Like... Make it to where I, I'm okay. Like if I get hit, give me a, a slight delay, right? Your Mega Mans, they got hit, they do the little uh type thing. <laughs> Let me walk on the spikes for a little bit. Um, sometimes this is really important to include in certain actions. Uh, if I'm in the middle of a fight and I want to use a potion to heal myself, you know, and you give me a, a brief moment of invulnerability where I can, you know, I can take that out. And, and take a swig and restore my health, uh, awesome. Uh, or maybe not. Again, all of these things are to be considered to help you make better choices for, for your game and your, the overall feel of it. So let me feel heroic. I'm done. That's me, Nuja Kajana on Twitter. Thank you so much. I appreciate it. It's been an honor. I wish that I could be there with you, but you're here. Uh, in my wonderful home office with all my cool toys and Gundam models and all the other stuff you can't see because you're not here. It makes me sad. Anyway, I'm Mars. Thanks. So, butt cloths. 
Are, are we back? Yeah. Yeah, butt cloths, otherwise known as tacits or loin Where, Where's Mars? We're getting there. Mars, where are you? Oh. I'm working on it. I have to do one thing at a time. <laughs> Chat, if you have any questions you want us to ask Mars, again, make sure you check out the Discord or just add us in chats. Uh, so we can ask away. I know oh. Mars has been answering some stuff already. Sweet. <gasps> All right. Well, we are we are back with Mars. Uh, us here at uh, GDEX HQ at the Columbus Idea Foundry. So thank you, Mars. Uh, I think the word of the day is now danglies, I think. Either that or butt cloths. Yeah, butt cloths. Uh, let's <laughs> see. I got, I got one question here. Uh, what is your process to QA mechanics when combining attacks? Like, how do you track or know it's behaving appropriately? Usually my, my kind of quick and dirty answer is I just watch people. Um, you know, I'm, I'm a part of the, uh, you know, Michigan game development community, and they have a number of wonderful events that I've been able to be a part of, like uh, uh, locally sourced meetups, and, you know, I, I represent IGDA Detroit, IGDA Ann Arbor and stuff, but, you know, generally just being able to, to share the work on Discord and, and just watch people play and have these conversations. Like, usually if somebody's having a hard time, <clears throat> you know, doing that three hit combo, okay, I'll, I'll make the adjustment, right? Awesome. Yeah, uh, along those lines, when you're doing like play testing and you're standing next to some players, do you have any hints on how to do good sort of get good feedback from te uh, testers that are playing your game, Cody? Uh, yeah, it's sometimes, you know, I mean, it's, it's really difficult because you can watch them and you, you know where the pain points are, right? Like you, you can tell just from their facial expressions, whether they're frustrated or, or what have you. But there's also some things that like, you'll only get just out of a, a really good conversation about their experience afterwards. But not everybody is really you know, they're at an expo, maybe they're tired, they're seeing a lot, they want to move on to something else. Um, you know, sometimes it's it's that, that survey or, you know, sometimes all you have is just a piece of the puzzle and you just have that brief moment where you saw them getting excited or getting frustrated, right? So you kind of have to play it by ear in a, in a lot of ways, I think. Totally. So let me ask you, we're, we're going to be wrapping up here pretty shortly, but... Uh... What is your generally your favorite part of GDEX? Or is there something you're excited for this weekend? Um, I mean, this weekend I'm excited really because it's it's all virtual, so I feel like I have a lot more access to not you know try to juggle being on the show floor or you know go to this talk or that talk, right? Like yeah, totally. I'm able to take it all in, right? Um, which is amazing. So there, there's some some great pros to you know seeing GDEX move into the. Uh, the, the virtual, uh, you know, digital space here. Um, you know, that's, it's really, that's that's my, my jam. That's my favorite part. I, I get to really take part in all of the action uh, this weekend, so. Awesome. Well, Mars, thank you so much. Uh, we really appreciate you, uh, like I said, being our tester for the first video here. And um, feel free to mm -hmm. stick around in Discord and, and interact with all of us. And uh, hopefully GDEX 2021 will be able to do it in person. Right. Can I add one thing? Absolutely. Uh, well, thank you to all of you for running this. This is amazing. Um, I know there's been some like sound hiccups and stuff like that, but thank you all very much for your, your effort. Um, for the next 24 hours, my latest game that I, I referenced, Flux, I have a free download key in the Discord. So if you go into the self-promo channel, uh, the link is there. You can download Flux for free. It's part of the showcase and all that. So uh, hopefully... All of y'all enjoy it. Awesome. Thank you, Mars. Thank you. All right. We are going to take a quick commercial break, and we will be back uh, with another session.